Good morning. Tis the season for OTR. As mayor of the city of Boston, the Olympics is, is a piece of, of a potential down the road. It's certainly not my highest priority. Marty Walsh makes the final pitch for the 2024 Olympics in Boston. What really are the chances? We'll discuss. I'm going to be suspected in certain department stores that I'm going to have to be self-conscious in driving uh, around uh, certain neighborhoods. Governor Deval Patrick's very personal candor about race as he prepares to leave office. I'm hesitant to get involved in full-blown military activity. I will not support uh, activity in the U.S. alone. Congressman Mike Capuano is our guest today. Terrorism is just one of the topics we'll put before the Somerville Democrat. And ho, ho, ho. It's when we pick out some appropriate gifts for some of our favorite political people of the past year. From WCBB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and happy holidays. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's Janet Wu. Our guest this morning on OTR is U.S. Representative Mike Capuano. He was first elected to Congress in 1999. He serves the 7th District, which includes Cambridge, Somerville, and much of Boston. There is much to get to today, so we'll get right to it. Congressman, thank you for joining us this Happy morning. to be here. I Good think. morning. <laughs> Here's the Good quiz. Morning. We're ready. <laughs> is that all you're worried about at this point? <laughs> um, on more serious subjects, the terrorist attacks outside the Mideast war zone is sort of multiplying at this point. What information are you being given as a congressman uh, on our vulnerability here in the United States? Not much more than you're getting virtually pretty much the same stuff. Um, look, there's a, there's a difference between being an open, free society, which we are, and being a society that is 100 percent secure. And I have made the choice as a person and as a member of Congress that um, I don't want to give up much of our personal freedom. And so therefore that means we have to accept some small degree of risk. We do the best we can to limit that risk, uh, but it's an open society and I don't want to live in one that's not. So how worried are you about this limited risk I'm not that worried we are? About it. I, I'm, I'm conscious of it and I, I think people should be aware of it, but I don't lose an ounce of sleep over it. We, we're experiencing a different kind of... Uh, let me ask you, would you call the, the Sony hack attack by uh, apparently North Korea as, as terrorism, as cyber terrorism? It's, would you label that? I guess so. I haven't really thought of it in those terms, yeah. but I think you're right in the sense that it's something new. Uh, it's something we have to start dealing with. I don't have a wonderful answer for it, but I, it, it's, I think it presents a new problem. That so now so, so can, to, deal to that point, could Congress do something about that? Off the top of my head, I, I'm not aware of anything we can do, but yeah. not, that doesn't, I, again, this is new to me and it's something I hadn't foreseen. If, if you're running Sony, would you have pulled the movie? I, obviously, everybody knows the story. It's around the movie, the interview, and, and I think the answer is both. yes, just because right, this is something new, and, mm -hmm. and better to be safe than sorry, especially since this is a, if from what I see of it, it's a pretty routine, run-of-the-mill movie. I'm sure it's fine, but it's not like a blockbuster mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think safety is, is always paramount, and so for now, I think the answer is yes, but I also hope it gives us time as a society to sit back and think about, okay, what happens the next time? So for, for right now, you're saying public safety overrides the slippery slope of self-censorship. Uh, it's, I, don't, I don't see the self-censorship. I hope the movie doesn't disappear, though I have no concern whatsoever about seeing it. It's, it's, I hope that doesn't happen. I do think that people need to take a deep breath and make sure that people are safe. What, uh, you don't want to open up a movie and have theaters empty because people have made individual choices not to risk for, for this. What about the p potential for, for other, like for example, if the, if the Globe publishes an editorial that someone's it's, not happy about, it's are real. we opening up a Pandora's yes, box absolutely, here? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I don't have any, uh, this is new to me in the sense I'm no different than anybody else. Right. I haven't foreseen this. And I do think that we have to think about how we go about this. And I, I do think it's worthy, to, it's, it's a good thing to say, okay, take a deep breath, everybody. And let's try to figure out what should we do the next time. You're asking very good questions to which I don't know that there are answers, but I think we have to have a discussion amongst all of us to say, okay, what happens the next time? Hacking was in the news this week. Uh, Cuba is in the news this week. What, what is your reaction to the fact that the United States will restore full diplomatic relations to Cuba and open an embassy in Havana for the first time in about long, a half long century? Overdue in my mind. Long I mean, overdue. We've had our problems with Cuba. We have our problems with many countries that we have relationships with. Um, obviously, Cuba is one that's it no longer, in my opinion, present, presents a serious threat to America or our interests. So. Do you think uh, Congress will go through and lift some of the embargoes that need legislative approval? I hope so, but there is a large and, and not large, but a significant and, and vocal group of people who may try to do their best to kill this. Um, they, they have vested interests, usually coming out of the state of Florida where many Cuban mm -hmm. refugees are. Um, so we'll see. I, mean, I think the majority of Congress would want to do this, but the minority might be able to... 
It, it, Stop it. Is it smart to trade prisoners for prisoners? On occasion, yes. Um, I, that's one of the reasons why I think this whole thing about never negotiating is um, I understand it and I agree with it, but I think there's exceptions. Every rule has an exception, and I think the answer is sometimes yes. Uh, you've touched on this a little bit already. Are you prepared for a tougher reality in January uh, politically? In Washington, uh, you know, your party is going to be the minority in both houses, in both yeah, chambers. I don't see it as tougher. I mean, we've been the minority in the House now for a little while. For, for me, the bigger question is what do the Republicans do with the majority that they have? Um, and I've been asking publicly and privately, which Republicans are we getting? Are we getting Republicans who are Tea Party Republicans who came to Washington for the sole purpose of shutting government down publicly? I mean, that's not a private thing. They say it. Or are we getting Republicans who understand that uh, government needs to compromise and we would need to do things? Uh, and I don't know the answer to that yet. Once we know that, we'll know whether mm -hmm. What kind of life will be? But you do have, um, even though you do have new members coming in, and obviously a majority in both in both chambers, it's basically a lot of the same players. What makes you yeah. optimistic that things are going to change? Because not a lot happened uh, because, the last couple of years. I don't years know that I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm kind of agnostic on it in the sense, again, I have no control over it because there are in the House there are 60 new members coming in. Uh, 40 some out of them are Republicans. I don't know which kind of Republicans we get. And for instance, many of the Republicans came in as the Tea Party, the so-called Tea Party people. Some some of them have changed their thinking now that they see the reality of how politics works on some things, not on everything, and some of them have not changed. Uh, th that's not the question. The question to me is more how the majority of the Republican caucus, how they react to them. Uh, the Tea Party has never been a majority uh, in Congress, not even close. It's the majority of moderate Republicans that have allowed the minority of, of extremists to control the agenda, and that's the question. There, there was a vote on the budget on the floor last week, and, and you didn't vote for personal reasons. It, 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 it it's your, is your wife, it was your, an injury to your wife. My wife broke her ankle. Is she okay? <laughs> yeah, she's fine. I mean, okay, you know, good. it's uh, kind of hobbling around. But That's the most important thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, but, but you have said, and, and you would have voted no? On yes, the, on I would have. Okay, why would you have voted no? Um, I don't like those riders. Um, I think that uh, government, we're still, though we're not living with the sequester, we're still living under the uh, approach to government that everything we do is wrong. Uh, the cuts to the IRS, to me, is, are abominable. I, what the IRS may or may not have done on, on targeting individuals, if they did it, even mm -hmm. if the worst case scenario, it's horrendous, and they, the people that did it should be held to account on it. But the IRS is a necessary item. I pay my taxes. I try to pay them fairly, but I'm also aggressive. I don't pay more than I have to, and I don't right. pay less than I have to. I want the IRS and anybody else to be there for those few people that don't pay their fair share. And to cut them hurts me and as, a, as a taxpayer. I simply want fairness and equity, and it's just a political payback because they didn't like one thing that one segment of the IRS did. That's just So there, there are many, many different reasons to vote against that bill. Are you ready for the OTR pop quiz? No. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to bring it anyway. Since it's nearly Christmas, we thought perhaps a little holiday-themed pop quiz on OTR this morning. Oh, good. Question one, a sure sign that a Massachusetts Paul has made celebrity status is when they are asked to read Twas the Night Before Christmas in an august venue. What is that venue? The uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra. Symphony Hall. The I Boston only know that Boston. one because I have done it. You've done it? Oh, that, oh yeah, cool. I made a fool of myself video just like everyone it? else. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas tree lighting on Boston Common earlier this month was surrounded by walls of Boston police officers. Why? Uh, the protests relative to some of the recent issues, issues around race. Very good. We continue on the record with Congressman Capuano. Stay with us.